Here's your wrestling news for September 22nd, 2021. And your headlines for today include Roman Reigns comments on winning two matches in the same night during WWE Raw return. WWE made several changes to Raw this week. Alexa Bliss fires back at report that fans left in droves during her segment on WWE Raw. Major takeaways from NXT 2.0. ESPN 30 for 30 director says how they handled Ric Flair exposing himself was a mistake. Ric Flair takes aim at someone trying to destroy his reputation. Brian Danielson writes tremendous thank you message to WWE before AEW Grand Slam. WWE reached out to Brian Danielson with regards to the yes chance. Triple H breaks silence after his cardiac procedure and more. We are kicking off today with Roman Reigns, who returned to Raw this week for the first time in nearly two years and competed in two matches. First winning against the New Day with the Usos by his side, the Universal Champion would go on to defeat WWE Champion Big E and Bobby Lashley in the main event, in what was an impressive night, even for the Tribal Chief. On Twitter, Reigns praised his victories, saying, My shows, my main events, my universe. With reports that WWE is considering having top superstars on both Raw and SmackDown, both shows may indeed belong to the head of the table, who is riding high heading into his title match with the demon Finn Balor at Extreme Rules. We reported earlier this week that Reigns on Raw was an experiment by WWE, and if the ratings for the show did well, then it could start a trend for more top names appearing on both main roster shows. That will likely be the case as this week's show brought in 1.793 million viewers, a stark increase from the 1.607 million who watched the week prior. Even against big shows such as Dancing with the Stars and Monday Night Football, the show saw a 15% increase in the crucial 18-49 demographic than compared with the September 12th episode. As is expected, the show did lose viewers across the three hours, but the show was still a massive success in terms of garnering an audience. Roman Reigns will no doubt be credited for that increase, and we wouldn't be surprised if the Tribal Chief references this on Friday's SmackDown, where some top WWE Raw superstars could soon be making their presence known. This week's Raw was a clear success for WWE, but it also underwent some major changes before the three-hour broadcast. PW Insider reports that the final script wasn't delivered until 6 p.m. Eastern, mere hours before the show went live, and although the matches that were advertised remained the same, the order and flow of the show was changed a lot from what was originally planned. With WWE doing all they can to get fans back on board, Raw went all out to present a show fans wanted to see, even if it meant changing plans along the way. One segment fans saw this Monday was an Alexa's Playground segment where Bliss welcomed Raw Women's Champion Charlotte Flair ahead of their title match this weekend. Afterwards, Dave Meltzer was quick to report that fans left in droves during the segment, but that has been refuted by the actual crowd who were in attendance. We're not sure what spurred Meltzer to make this disproven claim, but his report caught the attention of Bliss, who questioned if the fans allegedly leaving were the same people chanting and reacting throughout the whole segment in a since-deleted tweet. In a separate tweet, Bliss told Meltzer she was sorry he couldn't get clout off her segment with the Queen and used some scathing hashtags, including, Stop lying, literally didn't happen, and you're embarrassing yourself. Despite what Meltzer said, Bliss has a ton of support from the fans right now, and that support could culminate in her being Raw Women's Champion this Sunday. Over to NXT 2.0 as this week's show kicked off with a lot of fresh faces in the ring, not including the several new characters that would be introduced across the two-hour show. In the ring, Tommaso Ciampa cut a passionate promo about his NXT title victory, which was followed by a somewhat lazy series of promos from Cameron Grimes and LA Knight. It wasn't long before a mass brawl broke out, showing how chaotic NXT 2.0 is, as William Regal may need to invest in another enforcer. The show definitely feels unpredictable thanks to its litany of new stars, and this chaos will only breed competition. But NXT needs to tread carefully and make these massive brawls a rare occurrence. Doing them too often will make the concept feel forced, but NXT 2.0 got the balance just right this week, even if the camera work could have been better. Fans watching at home even caught a glimpse of the backstage area, where there was yet more fighting and, as fun as this brawling was, there needs to be a purpose behind the chaos. NXT 2.0 has debuted a lot of names lately, but by far the biggest star of them all is Braun Breaker. 
Strange name aside, the second generation superstar defeated LA Knight last week and teamed with Tommaso Ciampa to beat Pete Dunne and Ridge Holland at last night's show. Using the Steiner recliner at one point, the son of Rick Steiner pinned Holland for the win and shared an intense post-match moment with Ciampa, where he gazed at the NXT title before handing it over to the Blackheart. With such an impressive performance, Breaker has shown why he's the subject to such a big push instantly, and it appears that an even bigger push, one with the NXT title on the line, will inevitably happen. This week's NXT 2.0 also saw a huge title change as Roderick Strong captured the NXT Cruiserweight title from Kushida. Strong's win is definitely a positive, but how his win happened was underwhelming as he and Kushida were having a great match before outside interference by the Diamond Mine took away from it. The main ringside contribution was from Ivy Nile, and it was she who gave Strong the opening to pick up the win with the end of Heartache. Given how long fans waited for this match, NXT should have made this a complete exhibition without any interference, as there still needs to be that signature NXT in-ring brilliance in the middle of the new character-filled world of NXT 2.0. During last week's Dark Side of the Ring, Ric Flair's name was heavily featured during the Plane Ride from Hell episode, where he allegedly forced a flight attendant to touch his genitals. Flair was painted in a very negative way, but this isn't the first time we've heard of the Hall of Famer exposing himself. WWE has pulled down an episode of Storytime which makes light of Flair's actions on plane rides, but not everyone believes the claim about the Nature Boy. When ESPN 30 for 30 director Rory Karf spoke to Wrestling Inc., he praised the Vice series, but added that he's never heard any stories of Flair forcing himself on anyone. He said, I never heard that he had forced someone to touch his genitals. Everything with Rick that was construed as negative, I tried to address in the 30 for 30. His drinking, his philandering, his adultery, his money problems, there's quite a bit, but never, at least in the people that I spoke to, no one ever brought up that he would force himself on somebody. I did hear about him exposing himself, which to me is still troubling, very troubling behavior, and that is addressed in the 30 for 30. Karpf later admitted that mistakes were likely made when it came to how Ric Flair's antics were presented in the docuseries, saying, I saw there was an article on Deadspin about it, and I read it today, and I think it's a pretty valid criticism of the film. Some of the wrestlers kind of jokingly talk about it, that he would expose himself, and in our story, he was exposing himself to the wrestlers. But there's another story in the 30 for 30 where Greg Gagne talks about him doing it at a fraternity house to girls that were coming up. And that's kind of told humorously as well. But as the director, I'm kind of responsible for the tone, and the tone is humorous. So it's something, when I look back on it, I would say I think it's a mistake that I made, or if we went with that, we should show the antithesis of the results of that kind of behavior, which we did in other areas of Rick's life in the film. He jokes a lot in the film about just being a philanderer, but then you see the results of that from talking to his children and his ex-wife, and you see that there's victims to this kind of lifestyle. His drinking, people call him out on some of this behavior. It was important for me at the time, if somebody looked at that behavior, including Rick, Sometimes he would tell a story and smile, but then you see the other side of that, and as a filmmaker, that's what I tried to do is kind of give both sides or leave things maybe a little ambiguous and let the viewer figure it out. Flair has been in some serious hot water since Dark Side of the Ring, as his name was pulled from New York Comic Con and his Car Shield commercials have been paused until further notice. Fans have also called on Tony Khan to never sign Flair to a deal with AEW, especially as the company banned Hulk Hogan for his own controversial past, but according to Karf, the biggest claim against Flair during the plane ride from hell is subject to debate. In his first statement since Dark Side of the Ring, Flair denied the claim that he forced himself on a flight attendant, saying it never happened, and that's not all the Hall of Famer has had to say. In a tweet, Flair said that a man tried to destroy his reputation based on an assumption, adding that he doesn't even know what to say to that. Flair didn't name the man in question, but his tweet seems aimed at whoever was responsible for last week's episode of Dark Side of the Ring. Flair also shared a screenshot of a tweet by Rob Van Dam, where the former WWE champion clarified that he never saw Flair force the flight attendant's hand onto his body and said that creative editing has caused people to hear his interview in different ways. Only time will tell if Flair can bounce back after Dark Side of the Ring, but the Nature Boy is looking to hold whoever made the episode responsible. AEW News Next is Brian Danielson debuted for the company at All Out in one of the company's biggest ever signings. 
Tonight, Brian will have his first match for AEW and his first match since September 2009, not for WWE. The former World Heavyweight Champion is out of WWE, but unlike several ex-superstars, he won't be burying his former employer on AEW programming. In a huge thank you note to WWE, Brian praised the roster, calling them family when we're away from family, and spoke about how those who he shared a locker room with helped make life as a wrestler a little bit more fun. Brian went on to thank the crew backstage in WWE, everyone from those operating the cameras to those in catering. He also gave special praise to the production team, calling them an underappreciated part of the stories WWE tells. Brian ended by thanking those in creative, saying that writing and producing WWE TV is a difficult job, but their team is able to make a seamless production out of chaos. After nearly 12 years with WWE, Brian made a ton of lifelong friends working for Vince McMahon, and we'll have to see how the latest chapter of his career goes now that he's all elite. Brian has certainly made an impression since joining AEW, as the fans who have been loyal to him for years still support him in Tony Khan's promotion. Although the crowd continue to chant yes and point to the sky, Brian himself hasn't, and we now have an idea why. Speaking to Rasslin with Brandon Walker, the former world champion explained his decision to leave the chant, saying, I'm not doing it myself because I respect WWE's intellectual property. They haven't threatened anything legally. I had a great conversation with Kevin Dunn before I debuted with AEW. I was very upfront with WWE of, I want to let you guys know I'm leaving. This is my debut date. They asked me, politely, to respect their intellectual property. Even some things that couldn't be legally enforced. I'm trying my best to do that. Perhaps a time will come when fans stop chanting yes at Danielson, as he won't be chanting yes back, thanks to a friendly agreement he made with WWE shortly before leaving the company behind. The mere fact that Brian is now in AEW is a huge deal, not just because he was with WWE for over a decade, but because there was a time when it seemed he'd never wrestle again. In an interview with Moose and Maggie, Danielson brought up his 2016 retirement and how even after he worked hard to get cleared, WWE still didn't have confidence with him in the ring. When I was kind of forced to retire, it was more based out of like, because I lied to them? That's a good lesson to a lot of people. When you're talking your medical history, be very honest because some things were uncovered. They said, wait a second, it's not that we don't think you can wrestle. We can't trust you anymore with your body. Proving things is focused on other people. I'm not interested in that. I feel like I've proven to everybody that I'm pretty good at what I do. I see these next three years as kind of my last as a full-time wrestler. In my mind, it's not like I'm tapering off. This is the climax of my career. Danielson may be nearing the end of his career, but he still has a lot to prove, and it's entirely possible that tonight's non-title match with AEW World Champion Kenny Omega will lead to a much larger match down the line. And we're ending with Triple H, who suffered a cardiac event shortly before NXT 2.0's relaunch and has received an outpouring of support since then. Superstars have been told not to discuss work with the game while he's resting up, but Triple H has broken his silence on Twitter. Addressing fans about his health, the former world champion said he'll see them soon and said he's been blown away by the support he's received. Right now, Triple H's focus is on getting better, and we're continuing to wish the game a speedy recovery and a swift return to a much different NXT than the one he left. Well guys, that's our news for today. Please share your comments below. Also hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell icon to receive all notifications. And as always, thanks for watching.